Good. Okay. So this, I'm just posting a link everywhere so people can ask questions because I know people have got lots of them. Okay, right, so what I thought we'd do is just start with some real basics um, to make sure that everybody is on the same level and on the same page. And um, just remember to go and type any questions over on my Facebook page and um, I'll answer them as and when they pop up. So what I wanted to start with was the question of how does Google see you? Um, and lots of people come to me and they'll say, oh, I'm doing quite well in Google. In fact, I'm really pleased with the results I've got. And when I go and Google them privately, so um, only I can see uh, you know, what their real result is, often it seems that people aren't, don't know about using private browsing or an incognito window. And that's just one of the most basic ones. So I'm just going to show you about that. You can do this in um, Firefox or Google or whatever, and they all vary slightly differently. But what you want to do is make sure you're getting a true result of where you rank and not just um, what Google thinks you want to see, because it's very, very clever like that. So the first thing to do is I'm just going to share screen with you now, hopefully. Okay. Okay, so you can now see my screen, and I'm just going to show you that here in Firefox, up the top there, you can choose um, under File, you can open a new private window. And what that does, it gives you a, a private browsing experience where Firefox won't remember any cookies or caches, and Google won't either. So when you Google yourself, you know that you're going to get a true result. So, you know, obviously I'm just Googling myself, but it's going to show your real result. It's not going to show your browser history. So it's really, really important to do that and understand how that's working for you. So that's the first and most simple thing. And I'll just pop over and see if there are any questions here. No, no, not yet, but feel free to post them up. Okay. I think you guys are posting them all over the place, but if you want to post them on my normal Facebook page, that would be great. I'll just see if there's anything there. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about is how Google sees you. And um, I, in particular, I want to show you how the back end of your website, no matter what kind of site tool you're using for your website, maps to the way Google displays your results. And this is important for two reasons. Firstly, you need to know that Google's reading the things that you want it to read in terms of the words you're using. Uh, but secondly, the way it displays it to people on the page has a lot to do psychologically with whether people are going to click on your link. So I, I'm just going to show you what my profile looks like, and you can see it here on the screen. Um, the good thing is um, I've done one or two good things to help with how my um, how Google displays me, but I haven't really done a lot else because the SEO hasn't really been that important to me. I've more built my business through word of mouth and recommendation. And if that's you, great. But if you have any interest in SEO, then it's important to understand the mechanics behind it. So firstly, you can see that I've done okay. I've got my name is in bold. So I've used a, a page, um, a kind of a site title to let Google know that um, who I am. It's up front at the very beginning. That's the name of my whole site. And then I put a nice snappy little description of myself that fits completely inside the number of characters allowed in the way Google displays you. So that's good. You can see what I do. I've kind of got it does what it says on the tin description. What I haven't done very well is you can see I haven't done that for my blog. So my blog's um, being worked on at the moment. So that's really bad. It, what I've got there is effectively a description of my blog that just trails away into nothingness into dot, dot, dot. So what I should really have is a really snappy description that says, the latest news, posts, and projects from List Love Design. And that would be cool, because then people would know that they were in the right place, and they would be more likely to click on that. Now, the other things that have been indexed about me are all the different pages in my website, which is great. And a, a lot of people ask me, how do I get that? How do I get that in a result so that all my pages show below? The, the honest answer is you can't really control it. It's kind of on how long your site's been up and running and how many um, how many people visit it and the kind of traffic you get. But equally here, I've been terrible. I haven't done a nice snappy description. So really, I should say under portfolio, it should very snappily say latest projects and work from Melissa Love. 
and I haven't done any of that because I'm, I'm lazy and haven't got around to doing it, but you should definitely do this. So let's just have a look at the behind the scenes of how this works. And I'm just taking you into the back of, first of all, I'm going to talk about a non-WordPress site. And some of you watching this will have show it. So I'm just going to show you what the, the, the Google result I've just demonstrated, how that actually looks when you see it um, in a site. So in any kind of non-WordPress site, be it, I don't know, um, Zenfolio or whatnot, every single site will have some kind of SEO control panel. And um, here we go, site settings. It's normally in something like that. So I'll be able to see the overall settings for my site. And there's, there's my little SEO thing. So there is the actual phrase that you can see Google displaying. It's pulled through here from the site description. I've got a few keywords in there, not loads. Um, you know, I know that my blog is going to get better results than a static site, so I probably haven't spent a lot of time there. But at the very least, I've got a site description, a site title, and it's nice and snappy. You know, and I, I've also chosen how, uh, whether to use the www, all those kind of things. So that's good that I've done that. That's something at least. One of the most important things to also realize is that um, you can do this for every single page. So when you do it in every single page, you'll be able to see, um, hang on, you can't, there we go. You can see, so my home page, I've actually gone all out here and tried to snappy up the description. What I should really do is do that for every single page, and then I'm going to get a much better look and feel to the way Google displays my results. So it's not a long task. What you should really do is think hard about what each page means and its content and try and marry the two up. And um, uh, and most sites like Show It or otherwise are really, really easy to do this in. With WordPress, you have to do a little bit more work. So this is the back of my kind of a little test site I've got set up. Um, and here, if I've set up your site for you, you will already have All-in-One SEO Pack installed. If you don't and you're not using any kind of SEO plugin for your blog, just go to Add New go and type in the word all-in-one SEO pack and that plugin will be put into your site you can go through and set it up. Um, it's a free plugin, it's really easy to use and you do have to do the overall settings like we've just seen and show it. So here we go, I, I've got nothing in this because it's not a site I'm particularly optimizing but this is where I'd do the home title and just to remind ourselves that is the big one up here in purple. So I really should go and improve that. You know that's where you definitely definitely want to get your biggest keywords in there. If I w did want to become a photographer, I might put um, alternative family photography based in Cornwall. I would have a really kind of five or six word, really tight description for that home title because that describes your whole site. Um, again, the home description we've talked about, make it snappy. You've got about ooh, three or four lines where you really want to make sure that it reads well and that people can easily and quickly understand that they found the right person. And there are your overall keywords there. And we're going to come on to keywords in a little bit. OK, so that will, that will do everything that you need it to do, just those few basic settings for the overall site settings. Um, it's not the same as optimizing every single blog post, but we will park, we'll talk about keywords first, and then we'll come back to that. So I'm just going to I'm just going to move now on to keywords. And I'll just firstly check whether there's any questions popping up. Uh, here we go. OK, so Joanne was asking about WordPress. I think we've just um, answered that uh, with the plugin. Um, now, uh, and some of them are more general, but I'll come back to those. So let's talk about keywords. Um, this kind of, every time I say the word keywords to people when I'm working with them, they just go, oh, it sounds really complicated and difficult. And, you know, a lot of people like to tell you that this it's some kind of mad science where you have to use tools to calculate the best keywords. To be honest with you, it's not a crazy science. It's probably one, one thing that you should just apply real common sense to. So the first thing I would always recommend to people is if you've got some clients who have been really helpful or kind, or you've got some friends who might be in the same kind of target market as your clients, send a little survey around. Say, if you were looking for a family wedding photographer in this area, what keywords would you use? What, what phrase would you type into Google? What you're looking to do is try and get into the minds of people who might search for you, and more importantly, the kind of people you want to search for you. 
So I would say the common sense approach, asking people how they're looking for, for things is really, really good. And big organizations like supermarkets and stuff, they have huge focus groups who, you know, check on the actual physical behavior. They don't necessarily use, you know, calculator tools. They just do solid market research into what people are writing down into Google. So that would be my biggest tip is to try and work out how a normal person would behave when they sit down in front of their computer to search, hopefully for you. Um, the second one with the keywords, yes, there is a good tool, and it's useful for kind of telling you things that you might not have thought of, and it's the Google AdWords um, keyword tool or AdWords tool, and I've just just switching on. If you're here, if you are signed into Google and you then Google Google AdWords and click through, you'll eventually get to a screen that looks something like this. So you do need to have a Google AdWords account. Um, you don't need to ever spend any money with them, but it is good for experimenting with. So here on um, you, it's here under tools and analysis, and it's now called the keyword planner. So it loads up. Loads up very slowly. But you can then search for new keyword ideas here. Um, once you're doing that, I might say I am I'm not, but I might say I'm a phot family photographer in Cornwall. There probably aren't loads of those around. But um, you can then get it to generate ideas for you. I mean, they're trying to get you to spend money, but I like to look at the keyword ideas. And when you're doing that, you can see it's starting to suggest things um, that might work for me. So it, what, more importantly, it tells you here whether there's high competition for these kind of keywords. So, see, so wedding photographer in Cornwall is high, but not that many people are searching for it. So that's probably not worth spending a lot of time for. But people are searching for portrait photographers, and that's high. That's probably still a bit general. No wonder it's high. It's a really generic search term. So the key is when you start to get some mediums, have a really good look at, you know, portraiture photography. You know, these are the kind of things that you might bring into the odd blog post so that when people do search for these things, they might come up. But um, if I look, what I want to do then, this all looks pretty generic and, you know, you're going to be up against quite a high, um, quite a high level of competition. So do I really want to attract every kind of family who might want a photo shoot in Cornwall? Probably not. And you as a wedding photographer don't either. So this is when you sit here now with your keywords tool and it's really good to drill down. So I might put, like you might put alternative wedding photography, I might put alternative family photographer Cornwall and straight away you'll see the competition will go down, you'll get more mediums and you'll start to see some really different keywords being suggested. So I noticed when I did this earlier there was family photographs. So there's something that I probably wouldn't have thought of optimizing my site for, but clearly it's something that's, you know, that somebody who's looking for a photographer might put. So it's really good. It's not going to solve all your problems. A lot of that's going to come from common sense, but it is going to help you get a general kind of feel for how um, for how that's working. Okay, I'll just check back on the questions. Okay, great. So we'll carry on. Uh, I'll just stop screen sharing for a moment. Okay, so we've talked about Google AdWords and we've talked about the kind of keywords you can use. Um, what you then need to do is go back into the back of your site, whether it's WordPress or whether it's another type of site, and fill out a nice page title and description for every page, add your keywords for every page, and, and that's what I would call basic good housekeeping. Um, uh, the other part of basic good housekeeping is really it is really useful whenever you upload an image to make sure it's um, at, at the very least named correctly and if you're using something like Lightroom you can export with keywords and tags as well so all of these things are helpful you, especially when people are probably searching more and more these days using Google image search rather than main Google search so I, I definitely recommend making sure all your images are labeled correctly I know it's an extra step and I know sometimes when you're in a rush um, it, it seems annoying to have to do it. Uh, and also bear in mind, if you're someone who loves blog stomp, you can set the name in the output. So, you know, it's a simple step that lots of people don't ever discover, but if you go into settings and output, you can name, uh, for every single batch that you do, you can name 
uh, what, what it's going to be called instead of do, having to do it manually. So we've talked about, we just touched on all-in-one SEO because I want to talk for the rest of this, um, you know, the next 15, 20 minutes, however long we're here, just about um, blogging and strategy for blogs because I think it's something that people can get a bit discouraged by. They think, well, nobody's really reading my blogs. Um, you know, I don't really know how to keep com people coming back for more. I like, you know, most people would love to think they had a huge audience for their blogs. Um, I think the thing is, which I notice most often, uh, more often than anything else, is a lot of photographers just blog about shoots. And this is great if you're the family or the wedding or the couple that was in the shoot. You're going to be really interested to read that. Do you then want to go each week and read another blog post every week or so about someone else that you've never met? Probably not. So this is the question. So you've got your shoots that you do, which you blog about, and that's important because people need to see themselves on the blog. But more importantly, that's your chance to do what I call geographical targeting. And I tell you what, it works brilliantly every single time. So um, let's just have a look at um, an example. Has anybody, if you want to type in the box, we can do a live example. If anybody has got um, a venue that they'd particularly like to target, um, we can do that. So I'm just going to share screen with you again so you can see how this works. Okay. So going back to Google, I'll just choose something. Let's cho choose a really um, weddings at Claridge's. So I'm going to disappoint you by telling you that uh, when somebody is going to get married, they probably don't immediately go and look for a photographer. They probably go and look for a venue. Um, uh, and wouldn't it be great if while they were looking for that venue, they came across you? So I've just Googled Claridge's in London weddings. So unsurprisingly, the hope, and which is how it should be, the first kind of dozen results are carriages themselves. Then you tend to see the map results, and then you start. You've seen this person, Alexandru Weddings. He's the very, very first result after carriages. Now I've never Googled this before, and this is an incognito browser. So this person is doing really, really well. Um, and they, what they have done is named their blog post, and let's click through and see, Wedding Photographer Claridge's Hotel. So that's such a simple thing to do with your post, can, can be done so easily, and lots and lots of people don't. What that person um, probably could have done is also have used their fantastic SEO plugin down here for that particular post, and I, I will just go into posts and you'll be able to see what happens in the posts area. Right. So here is a post I, I wrote about a friend whose pictures I took, which is great, uh, and probably I haven't done anything about the SEO. But firstly, when you've got your SEO pack installed on your blog, you can it shows you a little kind of mock-up of how it's going to look on Google. So I haven't written a title or description, and neither had that person who's this wedding's Claridge's person hadn't done this either. Because what we need is a really nice snappy title which displays here, um, you know, and that would be something like getting married at um, Claridge's, you know, your a wedding in images. You might use something really inventive so that a bride's going to think, oh, I'd love to see a real wedding, you know, a real wedding in images at Claridge's. Uh, she's going to want to click on that straight away. And the same with the description. Instead of having a, if you don't put a description on your blog post, what happens is it takes the first little bit of text and then it peters off into dot, dot, dot. So if you had done a really nice snappy title like they, this person has down here, the third person, Andrew and Victoria's 1920 Snapper Wedding at Carriages in Mayfair, London, Black Tie, Art Deco, Wedding Photography. You know, that is much more attractive than something that's a jumble that just tails off. So, so you can easily do that. It's really simple to do it, and it takes just two minutes. And then you can put your keywords in for that particular post. So people do. So let's just touch on what a keyword's for. Um, keywords uh, are how Google it measures how often these keywords are mentioned. Uh, nobody knows how much is too much, and if you're a kind of spammy person who's embedding keywords everywhere for the sake of it, Google will negatively mark you down on that. So it's about making it seem as authentic as possible and not just stuffing things full of keywords. Um, 
just for the sake of it. So it's really, really important to make sure that your keywords make sense within the text, that they're not spammy and that they have and um, they flow, that in, they enhance the, uh, the flow of the article. So keywords are really, really important and because um, Google's always trying to return the best result it can based on the information that somebody's asked for. So this is when unusual keywords, uh, which might hit unusual searches, can work really, really well. So you don't have to just do that for vendors. You could also do that for florists. You could do it for um, yeah, all the other. Sorry, you don't just have to do it for properties. You could do it for all the vendors you work with. Um, now this brings me on to my my kind of next example, which is how do you then make your blog content so exciting and so fabulous that people want to come back again and again, not just to see their own blog post and that's it, they never want to see you again. Um, I'm just going to show you something, uh, a kind of little case study of a friend of mine called Michelle, a friend and client. She moved last year from um, somewhere quite small in the US to Dallas, which she knew was going to be a super competitive market. So when we put her site together, she said to me, you know, I know this is important, but I'm not a natural blogger. You know, I'm, I'm just, you know, n not that much into it. So I, she said, but I, I don't really know how to tackle this. And I also need to kind of make new friends as well. So we came up with this thing where her site, this is her site here. Sure, there's some, in, in, there's some easy links here to um, her wedding gallery. You can go straight there and look at the pictures. But more importantly, she's put certain categories of her website front and center to try and get people to click on them. So here she's got the kind of plan to be fabulous and if you go through there's lots of stories uh, about different ways to plan your wedding you know trends in wedding details trends in flowers you know the top 10 cakes she's ever photographed um, and she's found that really easy to she's gone around to she was able to ring up wedding planners and say I'm writing a I'm new to town I'd love to meet you for coffee I'm writing an article for my blog called you know top tips from wedding professionals can I include you and, you know, they were all delighted. So she did that with florists. I'm, I want, I'm doing a list of the best 10 wedding photographers in Dallas. Would you like to be on it? Yes, I would. Can I come around and take some pictures? Of course you can. So she made friends all over town. And within a year, her wedding business, her wedding photography business was really well established. Because she took the time to think how she could make her blog be kind of a trusted source of information. So the more her name popped up when people were Googling about weddings in Dallas, they're Googling a florist, her name pops up because she's done a blog post. They're Googling about cakes, her name pops up she's done a blog post. She seems to be the expert on getting married in Dallas and she's a photographer. So, you know, why wouldn't you book her? You, you'd want to book the expert. So um, it's a brilliant strategy if you can, ha if you have to take the time and to really think that through and to do it in a strategic way and to make a list of all the people you want to hit. So, you know, that, I can't recommend that highly enough. And I think once you've done all your basics of good housekeeping, you're, you've titled all your pages, you've done a snappy description, you're using keywords regularly, um, you know, you're tagging all your posts, you're tagging all your images. Um, once you then get beyond that into the strategy, you know, content is always king, doing it regularly and becoming a trusted source of information for people who are you're hoping to attract. And it doesn't just have to be weddings. It can, of course, be... Um, it can, of course, be family photography. You could do exactly the same thing. So uh, I'm back on the camera. So those are just the basics I wanted to run through today. Um, quick recap. It's really important to do your basic setup um, for your pages and your posts and your site title and your site description. Um, it's really important to do that for every blog post. Um, Use common sense to do your keyword research by doing some just general market research with friends and whatnot. But also do use the Google AdWords tool to see if it throws up anything you haven't personally thought of. Um, make sure you've got all-in-one SEO pack installed on your site, uh, on your WordPress blog. And um, there is one just before I finish, there's, and I'll go back to the questions, there is just one thing I wanted to show you. Once you've done the post, by the way, if you want to have um, a cooler, when people are reading it on the actual page, and I guess I'll find, I should do that for you. Okay, I'll just bring the screen back up again. Okay, so when people are reading, um, reading something on the page, 
you might want that not to look you might want that to look very different to the way it displays in Google so you know you probably don't want that to say something like you know Southwest England children's photographer etc when people are actually in your blog you want it to feel quite nice like that's a non spammy thing so just remember you once you've um, set your um, title here um, you can change and make it different to the URL itself so the URL is really um, crucial so if I was doing this to be optimized I would probably say I would probably change that to be something really cool and useful like business headshot photography so you can change the individual address the actual URL of the bit of the um, of the blog post and that's probably more important than anything else you can then separately control how it looks on the page ie what it looks like when someone's reading it and down the bottom just as a recap I can change how Google displays that again I'd probably change that to something um, I probably she's quite well known so I would probably put her name in there um, um, you know cool headshots for your business so you know you can see that you can actually control the way the title displays in three different ways you can control how Google's going to display it you can control the URL which is probably the most powerful tool you have to make sure you get that right and you control how it looks on the page when they're reading it so once you understand that you can do those three things um, I think you've, you've got it made so I'm just gonna pop a look at the questions before we, uh, before we finish okay so I think we've answered where we put things um, we um, Ellie you're asking I can what's the most important single factor in SEO if you had to concentrate on one thing only it's always going to be getting those three things right when you're doing a blog post it's um, making sure your title that you are um, making sure you mention every vendor you know that, that you're targeting normally a specific venue it, that, that can really work for you so um, and then beyond that obviously we, we've just talked about the strategy and the content so, any more questions before we finish? Oh, hang on, there's a couple. I'm really sorry, the questions are all over the place. Ah, Rebecca, you're asking about blog stomp. Yeah, it does knock the metadata off files. Um, I, they, they say that um, they're working on a fix for that because you can see the controls are all there when you look in the back of it. Um, they probably won't be far off doing that, so I'd probably just sit tight and, uh, and wait for that. Um, Becky is asking about Google Plus in terms of SEO. Um, I, you know, I'm on the fence with it. I think it's a useful tool, and it seems to be working really well, like Twitter does, business to business. Um, how how useful it is um, in terms of do people follow it and read it? I don't think so. Um, what it, I think what it does allow you to do is a couple of extra things you can't, which is you can um, get reviews, which um, can be then displayed in someone's feed when they're googling you and I, I do believe you can get the author box as well so in probably in terms of catching a bit of more kind of catching people's eye it's probably useful um, you know I think probably it's going to be time will tell on that one for another year or so before people are using it I know a lot of people coming today have said oh I've never used this before wow I've, this looks interesting no idea what it is so you know I'm not far behind you on that either um, yeah, Catherine, with the URL changing, yeah, it's not great to do an old established post if you think you've got lots of link backs to it. If you don't think anyone in the world has linked back to it and they're using it as an article of reference, go back and change them. You know, it can't hurt. Especially if you, um, you know, if people are Googling a certain venue and more than one of your blog posts comes up to show you've been at that venue, then, you know, they're going to think, wow, you know, this person really knows that venue well and I should definitely look those people up. Okay, I think there's a couple more. Oh, Neil, you're asking, do, do you use the social media bit of all in one SEO? The honest answer is I don't know, actually. I never have done, but I will look into that and type a response um, below here so you can see it. Um, Millie, you're asking about checking out our Google ranking using Chrome. If you mean the true position, um, again, they uh, Chrome has a similar thing 
if you check the menu top left, you can, it says open private browsing or open incognito window. It's one of the two. OK. Um, I think that's it for now. What I will do is um, I think I'll do a roundup blog post to uh, to kind of if I've missed any questions or ones I wasn't quite sure if I've been making a note of. You know, I'm, I'm definitely not an expert at this. This is just kind of the basics today. And um, perhaps we could revisit this for another one um, in a little while when everybody's gone off and done their basics. Um, thanks for stopping by. It's going to be on YouTube. Um, technically, I'm sure it's not been brilliant. It's the first time I've ever done it, but I will practice. And um, if there's any other subjects you'd like to address, and I'll try and work out some kind of better questioning uh, thing as well for the next one. But um, take care, and I will see you soon. Bye.